Meanwhile, there is more news that's just come in where we've learned that the Indian Navy has now sent three ships to evacuate Indian nationals who are presently stranded in Maldives and also are the United Arab Emirates. Dispatched to Dubai. Now, INS Jalashwa can carry as many as about 1,000 troops, but due to social distancing norms, this capacity has now been reduced to perhaps about 500 to 700. The Indian Navy has also issued a statement confirming the deployment of the three naval ships. And for more on this, we are joined in by Vyond Siddhant Sibyl, who is joining us over the phone line. Good morning to you, Siddhant. What more information do we know at this point of time? Well, as uh, Vyond reported yesterday, uh, that the naval ships will be dispatched and also gave the names of the naval ships. It's now been confirmed by the naval PRO in Kochi. There will be a formal statement as well from uh, the naval headquarters here in Delhi that INS Jalashwa, which is the Indian Navy's largest amphibious platform, which has a landing capacity of 1,000 troops. But of course, social uh, norms means that about 500 to 700 people can be carried. It is uh, now going uh, to Maldives and which will be helping in evacuation. The evacuation from Maldives begins on uh, the 8th of May and 200 people will be evacuated on uh, the first day itself. And India also has uh, two landing ship tanks, uh, uh, which is, of course, amphibious. Uh, one is uh, the Magar class, another is the Shardul class. Uh, they will also be helping in the evacuation uh, process. And Shardul will be going to Dubai to evacuate the expatriates. Uh, uh, we know that uh, India is launching its biggest repatriation process in its history since its independence. And, of course, uh, the Navy and the the, uh, the commercial airlines will be helping as of now and in the first uh, phase of uh, this uh, this entire process 1.92 lakh people are expected to be repatriated from uh, the gulf and the neighborhood in the neighborhood two countries maldives and bangladesh will be the focus area uh, and of course we know that in uh, from the gulf the first line uh, first flight lands on uh, the uh, 7th of uh, this month to Kerala. So, by and large, everything has been put in place and India is all set uh, to start its uh, repatriation process of, of people from across the country, the Indian citizens who have been stranded across the world due to the COVID crisis. Absolutely. And also this, as you mentioned, is going to be the biggest repatriation that India would, of course, be carrying out since independence. Uh, is, is there a a roadmap that India has given out stating that these many people have applied to the Indian embassies demanding that they be brought back home to India? Well, uh, as I just said, uh, the, the numbers in the first phase will be 1.92 lakh people. In the second phase, when the focus will be on uh, uh, Malaysia, Iran, US and UK, expect the same number. So do expect the numbers to be around uh, 3 lakh, that is uh, a ballpoint figure I can give you as of now. Uh, we know that um, the last time India did an evacuation, a major evacuation in terms of these numbers were in 1990s when the Kuwait evacuation happened. The number of people India got back that time was 1 lakh 70 thousand. And the first phase itself of this repatriation process in India is going to get back 1.92 lakh people. So ex uh, imagine the scale of uh, this uh, entire process and imagine the, the operations which will be involved. And uh, this is a mammoth coordination exercise and the, the Indian uh, Foreign Services, the Indian Defence Services, all are coordinating so that people can get back home as soon as possible. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Siddhan Sibyl.